Hi, this is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Some concepts that we're dealing with in our life are very, very deep and meaningful. Now, many times we're finding it hard to believe that what that we're going through in our private individual life is so meaningful, is so big. But we can see many times that even our thoughts can go so far and our prayers can move things in the world and the challenge is to believe in that power that really I had a part in, in, in that situation. I was praying for something and really it, it, it took place, something happened. Now, the issue here is that we have an evil inclination. Everyone in this world, when they are alive, they have a shadow that is walking with them. As long as you're alive, you have that shadow that is backing you up, no worries. He's there with you, making the world darker and more confusing and, and harder. And when you're growing, so that evil inclination is growing with you. Now, when a person is coming closer to the Creator, means that he is willing to come closer to the Creator, immediately his evil inclination is fighting, is battling is arguing and refusing to surrender to what that is about to kill it. The Yetzirah, he knows that in the moment that you will be unleashed, that's it, it's the end of the story. What will happen to you in that moment? You will become one with the Creator and there will be no more limits to your ability and you, as an individual, will bring down so much bounty and, and beauty and, and good things to this world that you're going to destroy work of thousands of years of, of, of dark forces that were destroying every good thing in this world. So what's the evil inclination's trick? What is he doing to separate us from our source of good. He's disconnecting us from reality. He starts making up lies in our lives and slowly, slowly people are falling in that trap of his gossip, of his bad words, of Lashon Ara, negative thoughts and start following his advice. Atzata Yatsara, the advice of the evil inclination of the Yatsara. And then people are falling from their happiness and their closeness to the good, to the truth, in the trap, into that spider web that is surrounding the person and from every direction is influencing negativity on him to do only one thing to break his spirit, to destroy his self-awareness, his high self-esteem, and to bring him to complete sadness and despair. Now, the reason why the Yetzirah is working so hard on breaking our self-esteem is because that he himself is not able to sabotage and destroy our lives. We are really so holy in the roots of our being, who we are is children of the Creator himself. No one can touch you. You maybe lost track 
of that information. Maybe you don't understand how close you are in the nature of your creation. That you're walking with a godly soul in those dark alleys of life. You're disconnected from being aware to who you really are. And only because the, the evil inclination made such a strong, good work on you to cut you from who you are with the intention of separating you from the truth, from reality. And bringing you to that place of false, of lie, that in that place you won't appreciate yourself and won't understand your true potential. And then when you're not aware to your true potential, to how powerful and great and awesome and fantastic and strong you are, you will start taking decisions in your own life in a way that will separate the person himself from his source of good, from his healing and from his recovering and from the good advice that can bring him back to life, from his wealth, from his prosperity, from all good things, from wonders and miracles and salvations that he himself can deliver down to this world if he would believe in himself. Believe in himself means will be aware to who he is in the nature of his creation. And the Yetzirah from the first moment of creation is coming down to this world as a snake with two sides tongue and talking Lashon Ara and offering more options in every situation that you have a free choice. He is bringing an alternative, another option. You got a job offering. It's a guarantee that in a couple of hours you're going to receive another one. Immediately. Someone offered you a shiduch, immediately another three options you have in line. You have another thing, you thought about moving an apartment, there is another area. Suddenly, pop up to the surface. Where is it coming from? From that power of imagination that wants to separate you from the truth, means from reality and to drown the person in a fake world of lies and opportunities and options and distractions from the one truth that is that the Creator lives inside of you. And that you are that one that is so praiseworthy that the Creator looks at you with an unconditional love, eye of mercy. And He appreciates every thought of yours. And every good intention means so much to Him. And He sees only the good. And there are hundreds of verses to prove that. And to show that to us. But the Yetzirah is working day and night to destroy our self-esteem and to make us believe that we are worthless and hopeless and ugly and stupid and that we don't have no more options and there is no way for us to succeed and that we are unbearable and that we are disgusting and that there are all kinds of theories on how to destroy the self-esteem of a person. But all of them are lies and all of them are coming for one cause. To make you choose wrong. Because the evil inclination himself cannot touch you. He doesn't have the permission to sabotage and destroy your life. He's got only one connection to our life and it's by the power of our imagination. He can make you believe. He can make you think. He can make you hope. He can put things in front of your eyes to attempt you. To offer those things to you. But the person that will choose right or wrong, life or death, will be you yourself. And how are you going to choose life? If you will believe in the Creator. 
To believe in the Creator, it's not to believe in His religion. The faith in the Creator is something that is above our religion. Our religion, Judaism, Judaism be, been given to us in that wonderful, fantastic day by Moses that delivered to us 613 obligations that are written, all of them, in the Bible. And on top of those three, 613 mitzvot, the Creator guided us to follow the righteous people that had the knowledge to explain to us what are the extra obligations that have been given to us by those righteous ones that could explain to us that the meaning of the word totafot ben enecha that doesn't mean anything to us because we cannot understand what it means totafot between your eyes what is it so the wise and righteous ones were able to explain to us that it is referred to mitzvat tefillin that we need to put the filin, and that filin must be made out of leather, of a kosher animal, in this size, and in that way, and under those rules and, 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 and descriptions. But, the mitzvah and the obligation of faith in the Creator is separated in a way from all of those 613 and include inside of those 613. Because came that righteous man, Chavakuk, that he was a prophet and said, Kol mitzvotecha emuna, that if you want to keep all Torah mitzvot, you must base all of that huge amount of obligation on one mitzvah that it's the mitzvah of faith on that obligation of believing in the creator himself if you are disconnected from that mitzvah of faith even if you will try to be observant even if you will try to keep the rules the regulations the halachot of the torah you won't make it you won't find life you won't find find happiness even while keeping Torah and mitzvot. And this is why many people that are choosing the right religion and are trying to follow the advice of the wise ones and trying to walk in the path of the righteous ones, they still find themselves falling in traps of the evil inclination. And they cannot see the light during the day. And they're finding themselves lost in their own houses with their families, surrounded with good friends and piles of money, and cannot reach true happiness. And don't feel satisfaction from life. When they have everything they dreamt on, and still they are bitter, and they feel empty, and trapped, and sad, and depressed. And anxieties are attacking them and don't have no advice for life and don't have no idea what to do to save themselves from a hidden enemy that is killing them from within. Something that is eating their self-esteem and their happiness and they cannot forgive themselves and they cannot forgive other people and they have hatred. And black bitterness is destroying themselves from within. The only reason for that to happen to a person is because that he is not aware to the truth. To the divine truth that the Creator Himself, He created you in His shape, in His form. And we know that the Creator is above body. He doesn't have a shape. He doesn't have a form. He doesn't have a figure. How can we say that He created us? What the Creator, He, he, he has a face, hands, legs, a back, shoulders. How can we say that on the Creator? En lo guf, ve en lo dmuta guf. He doesn't have a physical body. He doesn't have a shape of a body. But still it's written that He put that shape inside of us. 
and we are similar to him in that shape. What is that shape? That's the shape of your soul. That your soul is spiritual and is above physical limitations. Like the, the Creator Himself is beyond this world and not trapped in no kinds of constrictions of the physical world because He is divine and He is above the creation. Your soul is similar to Him in that. Because you are part of heaven. Your soul is chelek eloka mi ma'al. From above. You have a heavenly soul. And that's who you are. Because your body holds your soul like a vehicle that takes the driver. But the car itself is not the driver. The driver, he is the brain. He is the intention. He is the will. And inside of your physical body lives a holy soul. And when you're judging yourself, and when you're blaming yourself, and when you're being negative about yourself, you give power to the evil inclination that is lying to you and make you believe that you are your vehicle, that you are your body, that you forgot something, that you lost your car keys, that you're so stupid that you forgot that person's name, and you're blaming yourself on the failures of your machine, that it's your machine and it's not you. If you would be aware to who you are, you would never blame yourself on anything in this world. You would understand that the Creator gave you a vehicle that is supposed to fail. That runs on certain kinds of gas and fuel. And there is no system in this world that is not about to fail. This is the nature of physical creation. And this is part of the mission. That that vehicle will fail once in a while. And what happens when it fails? What that happens is that you wake up to understand, or at least you're supposed to wake up to understand, that you and that vehicle are two different souls, different spirits. This is your body, and you are a holy soul. And as that holy soul, you have a purpose. And the Mishnah that is talking to us in Masechet Brachot about Hilchot Zimun, how we can make Zimun. First of all, when we want to bless Hashem after eating bread, we are calling ten people. Why we're calling ten people? The Mishnah in, Mas in Masechet Brachot is telling us that the spirit of Hashem, the Shekhinah Kdosha, is hovering on ten people. Eda, a group of ten people, Shekhinah Benehem, the spirit of Hashem will bless them. They can call Hashem. But then the Mishnah is saying that also three because we found a verse that is describing the fact that the Creator's Spirit, the Shekhinah, will sit in court with three people. So also three can bless Hashem. And then the Mishnah brings another verse that is the evidence that even if a person is sitting alone in his house, Hashem is with him. And the Shekhinah will hover on him and he will be a source of blessing that can bring redemption, he can bring salvation to the wide world because he took it on himself. If you would hear that that righteous man, that you believe in that righteous man, one will think now about Rabbi Israel Abu Chatzera, it's the Hilul of the Ariya Kadosh, they will think on the Ariya Kadosh, will think about the Baal Shem Tov, on the Rabbi Milubavich, on Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, on Abraham, on Isaac, on Jacob, we're going to think on the righteous women, whoever you're going to think of. Try to think to yourself how powerful that person was. Try to imagine to yourself how strong he was. I'm asking you, why was he so strong? 
The Torah is rebuking and showing to us that there is no righteous man in this world that will do only good and never gonna sin. The Torah is exposing the failures and the mistakes of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob, of Joseph, of everyone, of Moses, of King David. Everyone, every single one of them, we can x-ray his lifetime and to see that he failed, that he made mistakes. But what made them so righteous? That they took it upon themselves. That they accepted the rebuke and they learned from their failures. When a person is willing to change and he loves the rebuke, he desires to learn, then the spirit of the Creator, the Shekhinah Dosha, will purify him and will walk with him. And he will receive that power from heaven to illuminate the world with the light of the Creator because that he took it upon himself that he was humble enough to admit, I was wrong, I made a mistake. And then he becomes a Baal Tshuva. He becomes a person that owns the answer. What's the answer? He's rising above the level of the complete righteous ones. That in a place that Baal Tshuva is standing, a person that knows how to admit in his failures, and is able to apologize on his mistakes and to express his regret and to ask for mercy and to continue to walk forward with no despair, doesn't let his sadness and negative thoughts stop him. A person like that can rise to a higher level than a tzaddik gamu, than a complete righteous man that, so to speak, never sinned in his life. How come? He never sinned. He just messed up big time. Okay, he regrets. Of course he will regret. But I never sinned all of my life. I was perfect. I put so much effort on not sinning at all. How come that Baal Tshuva crazy person now will do Tshuva and gonna rise to the heights? Because of what? I was praying Shacharit all my life. I haven't missed one day. I was reading Korbanot before the prayer. I was going to the mikveh since I was 13 years old. I was an Elu in my yeshiva. What do you want from me? I never left Jerusalem. I never left the Holy Land. I was so righteous, so pure. How come that crazy Baal Tshuva, that messed up big time in front, we saw he failed. How come he can reach the heights? How can he reach levels that I cannot reach and I never seen? What's the answer? What is the meaning of tshuva that is so powerful that can take a person that literally messed up big time to a higher level than a complete righteous man? He becomes a bal tshuva. He becomes to be a person that owns the answer. Which answer? The answer to all your question. What is the answer? The answer is which mitzvah he kept. And by that mitzvah that he kept, he became a Baal Tshuva. Mitzvah Tshuva. The obligation to come back to Hashem. That's the answer. That he knows that no matter what is your question, the answer is that you need to come back to Hashem. That you need to come back to your faith. That you need to come back to reality, to the truth. And in the truth, in reality, it doesn't matter how many times you failed. Because the Creator is always waiting for you to come back. That's why when we are failing and we're falling and sometimes even hundreds or thousands of times a day, we can always come back to Hashem. To come back to reality that all of those negative speeches and all of that darkness that is surrounding us is only those damned, horrible, 
whispers of the evil inclination, the snake and the devil himself, that is doing whatever he can to destroy your self-esteem. That you will forget who you are. Who you are? I'm a godly soul. I'm a holy soul. I'm a part of heaven. My soul is coming from the highest places of them all. The Creator was sitting with me and my friends and was consulting us how we think that He should create the world before creation, before time been invented at all we were hanging out. Me and the Creator and my bodies, we were sitting with Him together in the endless sea of wisdom over there. Yes, my memory messed up. I don't remember that, but I believe. The faith is in the night, in the nights. The faith is the biggest gift that's been given to us because you can function with it, through it, by it, in the hardest and the darkest hours of them all when there is no beam of light, when the moon cannot reflect no light, you can hold on to your faith that the Creator, He loves you. And that He created you in His shape and gave you part of Him. Ki chelek Yisrael amo, ki chelek Hashem amo. Hashem, He is that share that we were talking about. When we say that we have chelek eloka mimal, part of God from above, we're talking about verses that are saying those things. And then another verse is coming and completing and telling you what is that chelek? What is that part, that divine part? Ki chelek Hashem amo. The part of Hashem is His people. The soul of Hashem is His people. You are the soul of Hashem. You are those crying water that are crying because of the separation that we cannot understand, that we cannot accept, that we don't have no power to deal with this separation. How come in the world we had to suffer from that kind of separation? How could it be that we've been so cursed to be separated from our source of life? First combination from the holy Aleph Bet is Aleph and Bet and Gimel and Dalet, four first letters of the Aleph Bet. If you put them one after the other in the regular order, Aleph and then Bet and then Gimel and then Dalet, the meaning of those four letters is of God. I'm going to betray you. Hashem is apologizing to us and He's telling us, my children, I'm going to betray you. I am now sending you to the physical world, into the matrix, into the darkness, into a world that is full of confusions, into the hardest hours, to horrific hours to tests that you can never imagine that flesh and bone can be tested in. You don't know what I'm going to take you to go through. It's going to be worse than hell. But I'm going to stand behind the wall and I'm going to wait that you'll come back because I believe in you, Hashem is saying. When we're thanking Hashem and we're saying to Hashem, in the morning, I'm thanking you from bringing the soul back to my body. Rabbi Munatecha, your faith is gigantic, is great, is huge. Faith? Hashem has faith? Which faith? In what Hashem should believe? Hashem believes in the Bible. Hashem believes in the holy tablets. He believes in the holiness of the holy land. In what He believes? In the Creator? He is. He believes in me. That's why he woke me up. And he's got a great faith in me. He's got a very strong faith in you, 
to wake you up this morning because he knows exactly what you are made out from. He knows exactly who you are and how high is the root of your soul, where you've been carved from, and what is your power. And when he called Moses, and Moses went up to heaven, and over there he saw the angels made out of fire, and their sweat can destroy the world from heat. And they are complaining and arguing with Hashem. How come you give the Holy Torah to those people? They are liars. They are potential sinners. What are they going to do with the Torah? They're going to destroy the holiest thing in the world. What are you doing? Hashem called Moses and told him, I want you to answer. Moses looked at Hashem and asked him, You want me to talk to them? They can burn me with their breath. Hashem told him, hold my throne of honor. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is asking, what is that throne of honor? That Hashem gave that advice to Moses, strengthen yourself in my throne of honor. Rabbi Nachman is answering, it's written that the souls of Israel been carved from under the throne of honor. We are that throne of honor. The face of Jacob, our father, is carved on the throne of honor. We are the holy chariot of the Creator Himself. We are delivering the Creator to the world. And this is why one of the verses is calling us the Creator's mother. If you would believe it or not. We are delivering the Creator to the world by bringing down to this world holy souls to serve and to believe in the Almighty. And He is a King that is handcuffed to the edges and the corners of our mind. Melech Asur Berhatim being controlled by us. That he is asking. The verse is saying, Tzadik Moshe Lirat Elohim, the righteous man, he controls the fear of heaven of heaven. What's the meaning of that verse? How can it be that the righteous man, he can lead Hashem, he controls the faith of the Creator himself? And in the Gemara it's written that Hashem is saying, Who controls me? Tzadik. The righteous man, the righteous person. When it was Dvorah the Neviah, the prophet, when it was Rachel Imenu, when it was Esther Amalka, even a woman has that power to say to Hashem in Barach, that is what I want to happen and it will, because the righteous person decrees and the Creator keeps His word and follow the prayers of the righteous ones. And the verse is saying, and you won't be able to hide from that. All your people are righteous. You are a righteous soul. You're just not aware to your holiness. You don't know who you are. That's your problem. You followed the advice of the evil inclination that for years is describing you to yourself in a negative shade, in a horrible way, destroying reality for you, making you believe that you are hopeless, that you are weak, because that your car is keep on failing. But you are not your car. You're a holy soul. You're a divine soul that is higher than all the angels that are serving day and night with no sleep for thousands of years in heaven. You are higher than them. And when you're praising Hashem and singing to Him, all the angels in heaven stop from singing and coming down to this horrific world to listen to your songs. Because you're such a singer, no way. No. no, you're a horrible singer. But your heart is pure. And when you're honest 
And not only that you're honest, you're also honest in a dark place and your honesty is shining from the depths of this creation in a way that the angels are jealous of you. They don't know what to do with you. Because they realized that when Moses strengthened himself to the throne of honor and he became one with his people, the combination of all those tiny hearts made such an impression in the world that the holiness of our nation is a pillar of light that can illuminate the wide world with the light of faith by simple people like us. While you walking in the street and you're smiling to a person, that smile worth more than millions of dollars to charity. And verses are saying that, not broke people that don't have money to spend for charity. Malbin shinaim mechalav. When you smile and you show your teeth, means a real smile. It's bigger than to pour milk to a poor person, to water him, to feed him. Because by smiling to a person, you're reminding him of who he is. You tell him there is hope. Don't give up to the despair, to the darkness, to the sad aspects of life. Don't connect yourself to the temporary side of life, to the physicality. Connect yourself to spirituality, to who you really are. And I'm telling you, the first Torah in Likutei Moran, Torah Aleph in Likutei Moran, that the Rabbi Israel Abu Chatzera said on that Torah, the Baba Sali Kadosh, he said on that Torah that all of his life he learned Likutei Moran, the book of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, and he could not complete understanding the intention of Rabbi Nachman with Torah Aleph. Even the first Torah was too big for him to understand completely. That's what he said. Now in Torah Aleph, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is talking about Tzutzita de Nura Chivarta, a spark of fire that is very bright. This is a quote, I think, from the Zohar Kadosh, and if not from Zohar, so it's from Gemara. I don't remember. Baba Sali couldn't complete his understanding. I don't know where to begin. <laughs> but in the Torah Aleph of Likutei Moran, Rabbi Nachman is quoting that verse, that line, that is saying, talking about a spark of white fire that is showing itself like holy fire, but in reality, it's an impure angel, means a demon, that is sabotaging and destroying. And then he's opening and explaining that sometimes a person looks on something that looks so bright to him. He feels like might be a mitzvah. It's an obligation. It's a great thing. I should keep it. It will give me life. That's how it seems. It seems like a bright, beautiful fire. But the truth is, that it's an impure angel that can kill. When we want to come closer to the Creator by being observant and keeping Torah mitzvot, it sounds great. But like we said in the beginning, when a person is growing and coming closer to the Creator, his evil inclination is growing with him. You cannot offer a real scholar, a real learner of Torah, a real righteous man to sin. He will refuse for sure. But you can confuse him and offer him to follow a certain way of halachic tzak, to be radical, to be too strict, to take something that is beyond his real power or his family's power, or his community's power, and by that, to destroy their, them all, to destroy their self-esteem. 
to make them think again that they are failures. Because they will find themselves failing in religion. Not able to keep up with halakha, with the rules of Torah, with the obligations, with the basics, with the foundation of Torah. But it's not true. If you would learn halakha in depth, you would understand that there are many ways, like the ways of a boat in the sea, that can sail to any direction. You can find your path inside the Shulchan Aruch without being a sinner at all. There are things that you cannot keep after the fact, ideally, and after the fact, Bidiyavad, are permitted and allowed. There are certain things that if you will try to be too strict with them, in the end you'll find yourself falling. And like we said, the evil inclination himself cannot fail you. Just he will make you believe that you failed in a mitzvah, but actually you failed in your own imagination that you thought that you were keeping mitzvah, and you found yourself not able to keep that, so to speak, mitzvah, so-called mitzvah, but it's so cold that it's not a mitzvah at all. It's an impure fire that is destroying the people that are trying to be too bright, that are still arrogant, and thinking to themselves that they will be, and that they will achieve, and they want to take more than they belong, that they need to, that they're supposed to. But if you would learn halakha right, how really Hashem wants you to come closer to Him, you will see that there is always a way always a way that you can also function and do great things and not to be considered a sinner. <coughs> and this is why we're talking here, that we will distribute, that we will share, that we will talk to our friends, to everyone that is surrounding us, on being patient, on taking things slowly, step by step, Progressing and coming closer to Hashem is the source of blessing. But to take too much upon yourself, it's against the rules of Torah. It's not the will of Hashem that the person will work too hard for a couple of days, couple of months, couple of years, and then will fall in a horrible sound of, 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 of destruction that the whole family been crashed. It's not the will of Hashem. Hashem gives you life. Hashem gives you time. Hashem gives you wisdom. And Hashem provides the right advice. And with one day at a time, with that advice, Ayomim Bekolot Ishmao, to listen to the voice of Hashem today, to try to see what can I do today for Hashem? What else can I do for Hashem? But not to take too much upon ourselves. Because it seems to be so bright and beautiful, but in the end you realize that you're standing in front of an evil inclination, an impure fire that destroyed your life, that destroyed your house, that destroyed your children, that destroyed your skills and your learning habits, that took away your happiness and your hope and your satisfaction from life and took everything from you. And we don't want to stand in that place. We rather to come closer to Hashem one day at a time. Like the verse is saying, Tzadik katamari frach. A righteous person, he's growing like the palm tree. Seventy years it can take him to bring out fruits to the world. You don't need to be righteous today. If the Creator would want to make you righteous today, He knows how to make people. He's the one to do that. But if He wants you to be a Baal Tshuva, if the Creator wants you to keep that specific mitzvah of Tshuva, to express your regret, to work on your humility, to work on that ability to go and apologize again and again and again on the same mistakes, to humble you, if that's the mission of your life, that you will connect yourself to Hashem over and over and over and over. 
So that's the will of Hashem from you. So you shouldn't want to be different. You are who Hashem made you to be and you should just express the godliness that you hold within. What had been treasured in you, in the nature of your creation, this is what you need to deliver and give out to the world. You don't need to be me and I don't need to be him. No one needs to be different. The evil inclination makes you want to be like someone else, always comparing yourself to others. It's the most craziest idea in the world based on 100% lie. There is no way in the world that you can become someone else. It's the only thing that cannot be done. And only one thing can be done, that you will be who you are. That you're stuck with that. <laughs> There's nothing to do with that. So why to fight with the nature of your creation, that your creator, the one that you believe that is so wise and so divine, God, Hashem Himself, Yud Kei Vav Kei, King of all kings, source of good, infinity itself. He Himself created you based on His wisdom and on His mercy and on His greatness with the color of your hair, with the color of your eyes, in your height, with your temper, into that family, in that house, that community, in that year, with those friends that destroyed you. No, that's your test. That broke your spirit. No, to recover is your mission. So connect yourself to the mission of your life and don't walk away from it. Don't try to be different. Just express who you are in the spiritual aspect of your life. Express the light of your soul. And from heaven they will assist you to come closer and closer every day. And to achieve high levels that no eye in the world could have visioned before except of you. Godliness that is treasured inside of you is not available to no other creation in the world. Real godliness, sparks of heaven, a channel to Hashem Himself that you hold within, in your body, your soul, is something that no one else in the world has the access to. No one can figure out your password, your code. Only you. And you can share that. And you can give the world what the Creator treasured inside of you and make people satisfied and happy to find themselves, to find their inner connection to the Creator Himself. And it's the potential of each and every one of us, not of the righteous ones or of the frum ones or the fried ones. No. Hashem made you in His shape, gave you His figure, put the godly soul inside of you, and that's it. And everyone that is questioning on your connection is a person that is still questioning on his own connection. He doesn't have faith. This is why he's questioning yours. When you are a believer, you don't need people around you. You can be friends with everyone and you can manage on your own calmly and happily with no fear because you know Hashem is with you. With you, with who He made you to be. Okay? Great. Thank you. From heaven, they're helping me to provide this very needed message. To everyone that wants to find the Creator, the real Creator, I must say. There are many fake Creators walking between us. <laughs> many theories, many lies, many people pretend to know the truth. But the truth is something that we all share. What is the truth? The word truth in the holy language, the ancient language of real Hebrew, emet is a word of truth. Starts with the letter Aleph. 
and the middle letter Mem is the middle letter in the Aleph Bet, in the ABC, and Taf is the last letter. The truth is something that you can find all over the place. If you find someone that is trying to change your mind and to tell you that you don't know the truth and that he holds the truth and that you should uproot yourself and to come to his truth, he is a liar. He doesn't know what the truth is. But if he will tell you that the truth, it's just the truth. Don't lie. That's the truth. Be loyal. Be nice. Be good. Be truthful. Be a nice person. Be kind. Be generous. So then, it's a messenger of the truth. He will connect you to your truth. Your truth won't take you to this place or to that place. Your truth will make you truthful. Your truth will connect you to reality. That you need to spend more time with that child. That you need to give more attention to your wife. That you need to invest more in the business. That you should make Aliyah. Or it's not the time to make Aliyah yet. It will connect you to the truth. To reality. That you still have things to do here in the US. That you still need to see what to do with this issue. And that issue. It's reality. It's the truth. Connect yourself to the truth and you're connected to Hashem. Because Hashem Elokechem Emet. Because your God is the God of truth. And He didn't put the Torah and the wisdom and Himself in heaven. Lo Shamaim He and not across the sea. It's in your mouth and in your heart to keep, to find the truth inside of you. That Hashem he loves you and that you also love Hashem. To come back to your high self-esteem. To find your believer that lives inside of you and believes. That lives inside of you. To find your true self. And to be truthful. To be loyal to your truth. This is the mission of our life. Thank you very much. Hashem bless you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.